Hello YouTubers and booktubers more specifically, welcome to the Blue Stocking Bells! So my name is Olive and of course if you know me personally, my name is not actually Olive, but just in an attempt to save a scrap of personal information on the worldwide interwebs, I'm going to go by Olive for our Blue Stocking Bells booktube channel. So for my inaugural YouTube video, I will be going over the 10 newbie questions for brand new booktubers. So 10 questions, got it off of newbie tag, and uh, here we go. So the very first newbie question is, why did you start this channel? So the other two lovely ladies on this channel, as well as myself, have started a feminist book club about a year ago now, actually. And we really wanted to read books by female authors. So it doesn't matter if they're classics, contemporaries, books that are overtly feminist or maybe don't even appear feminist at all. We just really want to look for feminism in our everyday world. Critiquing things through a feminist lens isn't something that happens. Uh, we're very normalized in society to not question uh, gender for the most part. I'm also a firm believer that books bring people together. So Feather, Rose, and I met back in Alberta, Canada, which is also where I grew up. And we met in high school, so a little while ago now. Uh, and uh, since then, our lives have changed very drastically, but we've always remained really close friends, and we actually became best friends after high school where we met. Um, since then, I've moved out to Toronto, Canada to pursue a master's degree, which I finished last year. So even though we're living very separate lives, books have really drawn us even closer together. So I would almost argue and say that we've been closer having lived apart from each other than actually when we lived close to each other. And that, my friends, is the power of good books. So question number two, what are some fun or unique things that I can bring to this channel? So I think our channel is unique because there are three of us ladies on this channel. We're all quite unique, have different backgrounds, different life stories. Um, so personally, I think I am perhaps a little bit unique because I did my master's degree in criminology and uh, I have pursued criminology through a feminist lens and that was one of my main goals for pursuing a postgraduate degree, being able to look at things that we might consider normal in our everyday world and critique them through a feminist lens, being able to understand how feminism and inequality plays with criminology in our everyday world. And question number three is what am I most excited about for starting our new channel? So I'm really excited about becoming one with the book loving community and getting to know more people who love books. I realized pretty much when I finished my master's degree, after I finally had a chance to breathe and not read academic articles all the time, uh, that people don't read for fun always, or don't read as avidly as I do. I grew up reading and uh, I've just considered it a part of my life. It's really not a part of a lot of people's lives and that really shocked me. So I'm really happy that I found the booktube community and that I can now contribute to it. The next question is why do I love reading? I've always read. Reading is like breathing to me. I have always done it. I love doing it. Breathing is good. Reading is great. Um, and books are like my children. So as you can see, all my lovely, ah, lovely darling books, my lovely feminist killjoy embroidery hoop. <laughs> um, my books are like my children. I have no pets. I sometimes talk to my plants like they're pets, but they're not. Plants don't talk to you books do. A form of escapism for sure. Uh, I feel like I've traveled to many different places. I get excited when I've read about a place in a book and then I'm actually there. I'm like, oh my gosh, is the character standing on that corner right now? Sadly, that has not happened. Can you imagine if we lived in books? Uh, that's how I read. I read like I'm in the book. You get to experience things that you wouldn't experience in your normal everyday life. I just read a great book called The Chosen Maiden. It's actually right here by the lovely Eva who Stashniak? I'm so sorry I don't speak that language um, but I've never been to pre-revolutionary Russia I'm not a ballet dancer but I can experience that through this fantastic book 
Question number five is what book or series got me into reading? Two words, very simple, Harry Potter. Question number six, what question would I ask my favorite booktubers? So I guess my question would be, how do you find the time to read all the time? The rate that people read, especially even on Goodreads, some people I follow, man, they're starting a new book every two days. How do you do that? How can I get paid to read? Please tell me the answer to this question. Question number seven is, what do I think some of the biggest challenges will be in doing our channel here? Um, I think it's definitely going to be a challenge for Feather Rose and I to be creating a channel across the country from each other. Um, obviously technology is great and we can do a lot of sharing and stuff. It's tricky because we all lead very different lives, like I've mentioned. We're all very busy in different ways at different times, so I think trying to just keep our channel trucking along as well as consistently posting will probably be a challenge for us, but hey, I wasn't sure that we would be able to keep up our uh, book club for as long as we have and we've been able to do it effortlessly. So fingers crossed that the same will be true for our Blue Stocking Bells channel. Question number eight is, when did you start reading? So when did I start breathing? Maybe when did I stop reading? I'll switch around the question a little bit. Um, when I was in university, uh, my undergrad in particular, I was so busy and I'm a perfectionist, I love school, so I really didn't read anything besides textbooks for about three and a half years. Uh, then finally when I got into my fourth year of my undergrad, I didn't have as many classes because of good planning, and uh, I started reading a little bit, and I couldn't read a lot at first. I was so used to reading textbooks and taking a long time with that, that when I was reading any kind of fiction book, it was really hard for me to just sit there and think, okay, it's fine to have fun. You can read and have fun. So I almost had to train myself to uh, read naturally again. I did start reading again in my fourth year of university, and uh, it just sort of went from there. And you might think, oh, well, you did a master's degree, you probably stopped reading again, that sucks for you. But actually, even though I was doing my master's degree, I was reading so many academic articles. I've literally never read more in my life than <laughs> my master's degree. But I actually read a lot for fun. So I read to escape from the craziness. I could never really go far and do fun things because I always had so much work to do for school. Um, but reading was a really simple escape. Question number nine, thank you for sticking around. If you are still here, you are a wonderful human being. Um, where do you read? So primarily, I read on the subway here in Toronto. So the subways are nice and smooth and not sickening. The subway definitely is where I read the most, but I also read at night all the time uh, if I'm not too tired after work. And what I would really like to do is to be able to read during the day. So even just on a Saturday, just being able to sit down and read and not feel like I have to be doing anything. That's one problem I have and one goal I have to get over is just be able to be bored, be standing around not knowing what to do and thinking, hey, I'm gonna read right now. And finally, question number 10. What kind of books do I like to read? So um, the first thing that comes to me off the top of my head is historical fiction. I love, 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 love historical fiction particularly historical fiction taking place in Britain. Philippa Gregory is an amazing author who writes particularly about uh, the Tudor times in England, and uh, there's just nothing like historical fiction. One thing that I really like about the book club that Feather Rose and I have is that we really are exposed to different kinds of books. So um, books that I love aren't something that Feather or Rose respectively would pick up. So our book code has really allowed me to be exposed to different kinds of books. Uh, we read a contemporary romance book a couple months ago, uh, November 9th by Colleen Hoover, and I never would have picked that up. <laughs> and I did have to be convinced on it at first, just because it's not the kind of book I'll, I'll read, but I ended up really liking it. Um, I believe that was Rose's choice. and. Just being exposed to different books is such a, a great thing. But I think it's so important to be exposed to things that make us perhaps a little uncomfortable, a little unsure, and just being open to new ideas. That's one of my favorite things about reading in general. Thank you so, so much for watching my inaugural YouTube video. 
and I really hope you enjoyed it. Please hit subscribe so that you can follow Rose Feather and I and all of our discussions through a feminist lens about books that we are reading through either our book club or personally. It really means a lot that you're taking the time to watch us. Please comment any comments you may have below. Always open to book suggestions. Have a great rest of your day and happy reading!